Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video I wanted to explore Trappist 1 yet again. I know you might be tired of it by now, but there's another topic I wanted to cover, and specifically a topic about red dwarfs in general. We're going to be comparing red dwarf systems to solar system that we live in, and gas giant systems. We're also going to take a look at how all of this compares in terms of size, and of course what it means in terms of exoplanet exploration that might one day happen in the future. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. So let's actually start by adding Jupiter to the system. Why? Well, because I want to actually show you the comparison between the size of the TRAPPIST-1 system and the system of the biggest gas giant in our own solar system. We're actually going to place it a little bit maybe farther away just so that we can uh, create a stable system here. And so there is Jupiter, there is TRAPPIST. And so now let's go in here and click on the action of adding moons to the planet. And look at that. Look at the size of Jupiter in comparison to TRAPPIST. It might, uh, might be hard to tell, but if I were to actually add orbits here, you would see that um, in terms of size, basically TRAPPIST is even a little bit smaller than the Jupiter system. Now, it doesn't mean that it is smaller because it's very likely that there's a lot of smaller objects that we haven't detected around TRAPPIST system. Like there might be smaller planets, smaller planetoids and dwarf planets orbiting around it far, far away from um, from the location of even TRAPPIST 1H. But in terms of the actual um, size of the bigger moons of Jupiter, so there is TRAPPIST with the farthest moon, uh, far, sorry, farthest planet being at a distance of about 9.4 million kilometers. And here is the system of Jupiter with its Galilean moons. Um, and the farthest moon of Jupiter, Callisto, is at a distance of about close to about 2 million kilometers. So in other words, uh, the system of Jupiter is just a few times smaller in terms of radius um, in, com in compared to TRAPPIST, but when it comes to actual size of the planet versus the star, this is Jupiter and this right here is TRAPPIST. So it's actually just a little bit smaller than TRAPPIST itself. So Jupiter system is a very, very good representation of what um, TRAPPIST looks like. This, of course, applies to other red dwarfs as well. Let's actually do this again for another really, really famous red dwarf, uh, the uh, closest neighbor to us, Proxima Centauri, with its excellent, beautiful, uh, Earth-like exoplanet known as Proxima b. If I were to place Jupiter here again and give it all of its moons one more time, you can actually see that the distance between Proxima b and Proxima Centauri is once again not that far off uh, from a distance to the farthest moon of Jupiter. So here the distance is about 2 million kilometers and here uh, the distance between Proxima b and Proxima Centauri is only about 7.2 million kilometers. So maybe in terms of radius it's about uh, just over 3 times larger. And how big is Proxima Centauri compared to Jupiter? Well, let's go there and check it out. So there is Jupiter, and here is Proxima Centauri, which is, once again, just a little bit bigger than Jupiter. So a lot of red dwarfs in our galaxy, and there's actually close to about 90% of all of the stars that are red dwarfs, will be very, very, very similar to Jupiter. And they, they will actually reflect Jupiter in many different ways, including the fact that many of the moons will be tidally locked, or I, I guess planets, planets around those red dwarfs will be tidally locked. Many of them will also exhibit very similar other orbital parameters and also very likely um, be affected by their parent star in the same way that the moons of Jupiter are affected by it. For example, one of the biggest effects that Jupiter has on its moons is um, the high, super high radiation from its uh, huge, huge magnet magnetosphere. Its magnetic field covers a very large area and the moons of Jupiter are highly affected by it. Now, this might actually happen around um, these red dwarfs as well. So there's quite a lot of different effects that might prevent um, 
planets that orbit red dwarfs from basically having inhabitable planets, which doesn't really give us a lot of hope, unfortunately. And of course, uh, if we go back home to our own sun, if we take a look at our own solar system, we can kind of realize pretty quickly that um, in comparison to all of this, Trappist system is actually very, very, very tiny. So I've done this before where I basically placed it somewhere right here. And you would notice that even if I add all of the planets to Trappist, they're so, so tiny, so insignificant. And there's actually one that just accidentally left the system. But yeah, they're so tiny and so, so, so small in comparison to our whole solar system. Which once again means that our sun and our solar system is very, very unique. Not only is our sun very calm compared to other stars, specifically red dwarfs, our sun also seems to have very unusual parameters for um, for its system. It seems to have terrestrial planets on the inside. It, has, it seems to have gas giants uh, on the outside. And it does seem to have very hospitable conditions for water and for essentially life on Earth to develop. We haven't really found a system just like it and we'll probably still look, keep looking for a very long time. So even if I look at these nearest 400 stars, the newly added simulation um, in Universe Sandbox Square, even if I look at all of these stars in our neighborhood, it's very unlikely that most of them will be as calm, as uh, perfect for us to actually find a habitable planet around them. Stars like Barnard Star or uh, Glias 1214, or uh, this one right here, Wolf 6, 630A, will be um, red dwarfs. They will be too active and they'll very likely have um, planets that are um, uh, tidally locked to their stars. And other stars like, for example, this one here with a very difficult name of 9 Alp 2 Lib, or even more uh, famous stars like Altair, that's actually right here, are possibly a little bit too large and a little bit too hot to uh, to have a habitable planet anywhere within its vicinity. But we don't really know just yet because we haven't really found anything interesting about Altair. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to say in this video and hopefully now you know why our sun is so unique and also why um, the uh, variety of different red dwarfs that we discovered and all of the planets around them might not potentially be our future home. They're just not as good as our sun, unfortunately. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video, and hopefully you'll subscribe to this channel if you still haven't, and share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and wants to learn through video games. Come back tomorrow to learn something else, something different, and something that you didn't really know, probably. I'll see you in the next video, space out, and let's just explore the through stars, because we have that power in this game. And let's actually see what happens with all of these stars as I keep exploring them. Anyway, I'll see you guys later, space out, and as always, bye bye, and look at these beautiful fireworks I've created. I actually kind of like it. This is really, really cool. Anyway, see you later guys, bye bye.